My name is David Rutstein. I'm a family physician and public health expert. Most of my career, 24 years in fact, was within the U.S. federal government and the U.S. Public Health Service. I was assigned to many places, uh, most significantly 13 years in Micronesia, small Pacific Islands, then back in Washington, D.C., where I ultimately ran and administered multiple federal programs and retired as the Deputy Surgeon General of the United States. After that, I went to China and ran a private healthcare system in multiple cities uh, throughout China for five years. But now I'm back in America and I'm here today to speak to you a little bit about diabetes. You know, diabetes is a chronic disease that is estimated to affect up to 10% of the population, either in, in pre-diabetes form or frank diabetes. There are two types, type one and type two, also referred to as juvenile onset diabetes and adult onset diabetes. They're very different diseases. Juvenile onset, juvenile onset diabetes or type one, uh, as the name implies, happens when we're young. Really the pancreas, which makes insulin, shuts down and no longer makes insulin. This can be deadly. And patients who are diagnosed with type one diabetes need to have insulin injections or more recently using an insulin pump for the rest of their life. Type two diabetes is much more common. And this, as the name implies, onset in adulthood, uh, this disease affects people who uh, are adults and they carry this disease for the rest of their life. What does diabetes result in? Well, as most people know, diabetes results in an elevation of the blood sugar. This alone causes damage to various organs throughout the body, including blood vessels, the kidneys, eyes, nerves, and the heart. So it's important for patients who have diabetes to keep their blood sugar within or as close to the normal range as possible. For people with type 1 diabetes, that means taking insulin. For people with type 2 diabetes, it usually means reducing their weight, getting enough exercise, and watching what they eat, and taking medications when necessary. Type 1 diabetes, people are not making insulin and therefore need to use insulin from an external source. That's not the problem in type 2 diabetes. Patients with type 2 diabetes have a relative insensitivity to insulin. In other words, they make insulin just fine, but the tissues where that insulin is supposed to work, where that insulin is supposed to reduce the blood sugar, no longer is sensitive to that insulin. So what increases our sensitivity to insulin? All the things I mentioned, exercise, maintaining a normal body weight, and when necessary, taking medications that increase the body's sensitivity to insulin. Finally, let's talk a little bit about diet. Patients with diabetes need to be careful that they don't eat too much carbohydrate, especially refined carbohydrate, because that is easily converted to sugars in the body. And patients with diabetes who've already sustained some damage to their kidneys need to be careful with how much protein they eat as well. 
your physician can help you to design a diet that is appropriate for you. But the takeaway message from this, for all those patients who have type 2 diabetes or who might be hovering between hyperglycemia, which high blood sugar, but that hasn't quite reached the diabetes diagnosis range yet, and frank diabetes, here's what you can do. Exercise daily. By that I mean aerobic and anaerobic exercise. If you're overweight, make a concerted effort to lose weight. Every pound you lose will increase the sensitivity your body has to the insulin you already make. Eat whole foods that are not too high in carbohydrates and not too high in protein if you already have kidney damage. And consult your physician regularly. If you need medications, take them regularly. If you lose weight and exercise, it turns out your requirement for medications will gradually go down, down, and down. And one day, you may not need to take medication at all. Well, I hope this has given you a little glimpse into type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes and the strategies you can employ to manage them. Stay healthy.